Okay guys, so today we're gonna talk about what to pack for your BBL um, or any plastic surgery you might be traveling to go to. These are some really great um, things to pack with you for your travel abroad plastic surgery journey. Um, I'm actually having surgery January 16th in Houston, Texas. I live here in Sacramento, so I will be traveling. Um, we're actually going to do Airbnb house style opposed to a recovery home and we're actually going to be using my future husband Mark Allen as my nurse opposed to hiring a nurse. So we do have to bring our own supplies because like I said we won't be using a recovery home. So if you are like me and you're traveling for surgery and are going to be taken care of by a family member. Um, these are some things that you might need to pack. And even if you are going to a recovery home, these are some really good things to pack. So I'm gonna start off with um, disinfectant because obviously right now we are in a pandemic of coronavirus. So you wanna make sure you're bringing your sanitation spray um, or some and or some disinfectant wipes just so that you can sanitize wherever you're staying, your bed, um, wipe down all the um, knobs and switches and everything especially because you're having surgery you want to make sure that you are as healthy as possible and not exposed to any germs so you want to make sure you're bringing your cleaning supplies. also like to add some hand sanitizer make sure you're bringing that that's just a must-have so make sure you pack in bulk just because you're going to be staying for a week to two weeks you don't want to just bring a small little hand sanitizer and be out in a couple of days so bring a nice good amount of hand sanitizer moving on to um, soap i have some dove soap right here um i would highly suggest the antibacterial soap this does not say antibacterial on it something like dial is antibacterial i didn't grab the I didn't grab any yet, but I just wanted to show you guys to pack soap that is antibacterial. Make sure you wash your body the night before with that soap. And if you take a shower the morning of surgery, make sure you use antibacterial. And then after, you want to keep the germs away as much as possible. Like I said, you're healing from surgery. And also you have open um, incisions that are gonna be draining and you don't want to get any bacteria in them. So a big thing to pack. Moving on, um, let's move into supplements. And um, liquid iron is really, really good. I'm gonna put this right here. I got this one from Amazon. Liquid iron actually absorbs into the bloodstream better than um, an actual pill form of iron. And like I said, I got this on Amazon for like eight bucks and you just take a tablespoon a day and it gets your iron up. So it's great for before surgery, but also pack it for after surgery for healing because you're gonna lose a lot of fluid, a lot of blood, and you just want your iron to be up and healthy. So this one right here, and this is liquid iron. And this is Nature's Way berry flavored liquid iron. Next, um, I, you don't have to pack biotin, but I suggest to pack biotin. I don't know if you're like me, but you're gonna be healing in, um, for a, a week, two weeks, however. And I want my skin, nail, and hair, hair to grow during that process. So I would say bring your vitamins like biotin. Um, also your collagen, you guys know I'm a collagen snob I love my collagen mix it in with your vitamin C mix it with your um, your iron your liquid iron but get as much collagen as you can before and after surgery and this is a great one from Target called vital proteins collagen peptides and it is unflavored so really really good to have and this is great for skin and I always talk about collagen so next you want to pack your arnica gel um, if you have Arnica tabs, uh, Arnica, anything Arnica teas, you want to pack Arnica. Arnica is great for, um, for bruising and swelling. Um, and it's just really, really good for muscle pain, stiffness, swelling from injuries and bruising. So you could rub this on the areas after surgery, um, for swelling and bruising. And this stuff works really, really fast. You can get this from Walmart pharmacy, CVS, any place that is a pharmacy, just make sure it says Arnica on it. 
a good one to have a lot of people forget and don't think about this is a female urinal now if you watched my first BBL video you know I had the plastic bottle type urinal now they have come a long way and have the actual female urinal ones that are super cute with the travel bag inside and I got this off of Amazon for ten dollars and the reason behind having a um, urine female urinal when having surgery is because if you have a BBL or any kind of transfer you cannot sit or you can't you know disrupt the fat cells from attaching themselves back to the skin just because they need to survive so you don't want to damage them by having to sit down to go pee so you need a female urinal and if you're like me and you try to use the restroom squatting it just is a hot mess so this is great to have and it also comes with a pouch so that if you're running around you can wash it out and put it in the pouch and bring it with you if you are doing any shopping or going to a restaurant or whatever that might be so this is one of the key things to pack is your female urinal okay next we're gonna go to your abdominal board so this is a board that has um, fabric on it. Um, some plastic surgeons, when they do surgery, they um, give you a ab board, but some don't. I like to have one just in case they don't provide you with an ab board. Um, my first BBL, they did give me one, and it is in my previous video. And then, a, and the importance of an ab board is that whenever you have liposuction on the stomach. You have to think about your skin. The best way I can describe it is your skin is kind of like Play-Doh. So it's been manipulated, it, it's been mushed up, it's been stretched out, it's just been through war. And then once you smooth it back out, you want it to heal nice and smooth. So if you have Play-Doh that you've played with and it has all these ripples in it and it hardens, it stays like that forever. So you wanna smooth it out by keeping your ab board tight to your stomach so when you bend and you move, it doesn't crease your stomach and it hardens and stays that way. So ab boards are very, very important to have a nice, smooth, healing tummy and you don't have all those marks in it. So you can get this from Amazon um, and this is just the MND Fajas ab board. Really, really good. You hear how hard it is? Nice and sturdy. Another important thing with your ab boards are your foams. So foams are very, very important, just like the ab board. These are the EpiFoams Coated Compression Foam from Amazon, and it's a three pack. So I also am gonna do a video where it, I show you how to put your Faha on, your Faha on with all of your, your goodies because people just think they just throw a faha on and you're healing no it is a process to get in and out so what you do is you put your faha on you bring it over the butt and then you have um your your foams so a lot of people try to put their ab board directly on their skin and that is a big no-no you don't want that impression on your stomach because then you'll start to get that line. You want to put your foam as a soft barrier and then you take your ab board and put that on to keep your, sh your posture nice and straight and then you pull your faha up over that. So do not put your ab board directly on your skin. That is a no-no. You want to protect your results with your foams all the way around. So I like to do one in the front and two on the sides and then your ab board. Very, very important foams. Please, this is going to make your stomach nice and smooth. And some doctors provide them and some don't. Don't take the risk of your doctor not have it on deck ready to go. So another key to your Faha foams and um, ab board is your triangle. This also is a triangle foam lumbar from um, Amazon again. When I had my first BBL, they actually made me a triangle out of puppy pads. They folded it and made it like it was dope. Like that was probably the best product or thing that I had because it creates that nice arch scooped back area where you have lipoed in this area right here. And you just put that right there and then you're, you put your foam and then that right there and your faha on and that's how you get that nice scooped back. This is 
very, very important. And this is the Triangle Foam Lumbar Molder. And I might do a video on how to make them out of puppy pads if you, you know, can't afford to get one of these or don't have the time. I will show you a nice little hack for this. Very important. So make sure foams all the way around. Then um, your triangle. And then this, since it's foam and it's not hard, you can put this directly on the skin. See, it's squishy. So moving on. Um, let's go to the BBL booty pillow. So I did not have this the first time around. When I got my BBL three plus years ago, BBLs weren't huge or not spoken about a lot. So I just went to the good old baby store and got me a baby boppy. So which a boppy is a baby pillow that pregnant women or mothers would put around their stomach and it would just make it easy for the baby to sit and breastfeed. So what I did was I took the baby pillow and I stuffed it right underneath my butt and it gave me enough leverage so I wouldn't have to sit on it. Back then you kind of just had to improvise. Um, nowadays you dolls have a, a lot easier and you have things like this that are engineered exactly for a BBL so as you can see this BBL pillow um, has curvatures in it to fit your thighs and it's made to just be put directly underneath your butt with no pressure on the butt on the thighs to elevate your butt up and I love that it's black and discreet it also has a zipper that you can take it off and wash if you get any blood or anything on that. And this also was on Amazon. This is just a no-name brand that was 30 bucks. You don't need the $100 one. Just get a cheap one that's nice and sturdy. And that is from Amazon, no-name brand. Has a little handle. Really, really great. Now, I don't know if I have enough fat for a BBL or a transfer. Uh, my doctor's gonna let me know when I get there. Um, if I only have enough fat to do hips, so be it, but I still want to keep myself elevated off of my hip area so I don't mess up the fat. So anytime you do a transfer to the lower part of your body, you want to get one of these. Okay, let's move on to puppy pads. Now, like I said, I'm an OG surgery doll. I use puppy pads. Nowadays, they have surger surgical everything i just use the good old-fashioned puppy pads i don't need to be fancy you can go to petco and get some of these and if you don't know what they are they are just pee pads they open up and they absorb liquid and whatnot so what you want these for are that you're going to line your bed with these some people even fold them up and put them in their faha to absorb any liquid that drains so their faha doesn't get super dirty. Um, these are also is what's made to make the triangle and you fold it and you just keep folding and folding. I will show you guys how to do that at another time. But these come in handy, especially if you're staying at an Airbnb or a hotel. You do not want to be charged for a new mattress because you are going to drain. I might insert a clip of my drainage from my first um, BBL, but I'm telling you, you guys are going to leak, leak, leak all over the place. It's going to look like a murder scene. So be Wear. and make sure you're doubling up and just protect your sheets protect your bed protect all of that with these this is great to have so we just have a few more things um, this is my OG Faha and my arm sleeves a lot of doctors obviously are gonna provide you with these because when you wake up from surgery you have to have them on um, so I would just suggest maybe grabbing a second pair just because you're eventually gonna have to switch out of it and wash it and you do not want to be out of compression for any amount of time in your first couple of weeks of surgery. So when you take off your faha to wash it because it's crusty, it's got blood on it, it's got pee on it from accidents, whatever, when you throw it in the washer, you want to have a second one to put right on so you are compressed and you are snatched the whole time. You don't ever want to take your compression off and allow your body to have time to build fluid up. You don't want that. So I suggest just grabbing a second one um, and if you need to ask your doctor what size, by all means, go ahead and do that. And this is just my OG one from Up Lady. 
This is the first one. Look how small the waist is. I actually had it um, taken in on the waist because I got super small and it has the the rows, four rows, but it also has the crotchless part. So I suggest to not get one like this where it's a zipper. For obvious reasons, you don't want to zip your private parts up, but there are ones that just have an opening and I suggest to get those ones because this one with the zipper is brutal and it hurts. So, but yes, Faha just like this and this is your surgical garment and then if you're doing your arms you want to keep your arms compressed and this one is from Morena Recovery and it just has buttons on the back so that you can kind of adjust the tightness if you have a wider back and so these are compression gar garments lastly I have a cute little set right here and this is just symbolic of bringing loose fit clothing, some sunglasses, and a hat to throw on. You don't want to be worried about, you know, people seeing you just with your no makeup. Just throw some sunglasses on and a hat and have your loose sundress. This one has buttons that go all the way up and down so I don't, if you're having lipo um, of the arms, you're not reaching up above your head or if you're having a breast augmentation with your BBL you're not lifting your arms up um, you just are just throwing this on and you're loose and you still look cute and you're ready to go so loose fitted clothing is a must don't try to bring leggings don't try to bring jeans don't try to don't try to be cute just try to be functional so lastly I have a little whiteboard for you guys of some things that I forgot um, so I just want to start off with, um, what is that saying? Oh, your medication. So make sure the night before you fulfill your medications from your doctor, um, you don't want to wait till the next day to send someone to get your medications and you're in pain and you don't have your pain medications, you don't have your antibiotics. You want to be ready to go. Next, you have your compression socks. A lot of doctors are going to give you these, um, but like I said, it's great to have a second pair just in case they get you know, ripped or dirty or whatnot. Compression socks are very important during surgery. They help with swelling and they help with blood clots. They help with a lot of things. And especially if you're traveling on the airplane back, you want to keep your compression socks on because when you go up in an airplane, there's a lot of um, pressure and there's a lot of I don't know like the scientific terms of what goes on in an air in an airplane but I just know there's a lot of cabin pressure and you don't want to build up all that in your body after surgery so compression socks help with that um, also um, stool softener stool softener is a really good one to bring because when you get out of surgery you are going to be extremely constipated and bloated from the anesthesia anytime you've been put anytime you ever have ever been put under you will notice that you are constipated um, and you are bloated. Constipation comes from the pain medicines and um, bloating comes from the anesthesia. So stool softener like Dufilax or Dusilax, something, whatever, is really good to bring. Make sure you okay that with your doctor too. Any vitamins, pills, anything, make sure you a-okay with your doctor. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, um, but make sure you just ask them, hey, you know, is this okay to bring? Is this okay to take? Always run everything that you ingest into your body um, before and after surgery with your doctor. Um, lastly, this is something that's not to pack, but this is if you are staying at a hotel or an Airbnb, you want to have before you go into surgery stocked up on pineapple juice, water, Gatorade, lots of protein, and oh, it's backwards, <laughs> oh my gosh. It's backwards for me writing, so oh well. And lots of protein and no salty foods. So you don't want to have salty foods after, um, after surgery just because salt retains water so you're trying to release the water from your liposuction and release the fluid you don't want to bloat so salt contains the bloating so no salt or less salt you'll release the water and lymphatic fluids and everything like that super fast and then also lots of protein to help um 
back the recovery process similar to iron and then water pineapple juice and gatorade pineapple juice is really good for swelling bromelain is really good for swelling and then water and gatorade just help replenish all the fluids that you lost and electrolytes are obviously really really good for healing so those are my suggestions to have stocked and ready lots of snacks so you don't have to run around and get food because you will be in the house recovering so that was my my video on what to pack for surgery or BBL I hope you guys like this video make sure you thumbs up make sure you're subscribing and if you don't follow me follow me on Instagram at Shanae Monique thank you bye guys